Hi, in the first video, we have solved triangle problem number one. In this video, we're going to solve triangle problem number two. Um, the solution of problem number two is based on the construction of problem number one. The first thing we would like to do is I would like to find a point G on FE such that GE will be congruent to AE. And that is not difficult to do. I'm going to measure the segment EA. I'm going to measure the segment EA and locate the point G. And then I'm going to connect. AG to produce a segment inside the triangle and I'm going to call this point D and I'm going to connect FD as well well based on this construction GE is congruent to EA and that is an isosceles triangle GE congruent to EA and that is 60 degrees that means the sum of these two angles here will be 120 degrees that means that is 60 degrees and that is also 60 degrees and that will make this angle 10 degrees because the big angle here is 70 degrees well, we have 60, 60 and 60. That means it is a equilateral triangle. And let me call AE small b. And this one will be small b. And then it's small b as well. Well, and now we're going to focus on two triangles here. The triangle FGA on the left and the triangle DGE on the right well we know that it is 20 degrees 10 degrees and 10 degrees give us 20 degrees that is small b and that is 120 degrees 120 plus 60 is 180 and the triangle on the right I know that it is 20 degrees I just copy over here and that is small b and that is also 120 degrees vertical angles and these two triangles here the one on the left and the one on the right are congruent the reason is quite simple angle side angle if these two triangles are congruent I would say FG will be congruent to GD and I'm going to connect FD here we know that there is 60 degree angles here. The sum of these two angles here will be 120 degrees because this is an isosceles triangle. But these two angles are congruent. That means there is 60 degrees and then there's 60 degrees. That means that we have another equilateral triangle on the top. And I'm going to call F D small b. Uh, let me call FD small d and this one will be small d and this one will be small d and we're going to transfer this information to the original diagram this small d, small d and small d here and the next thing is we would like to locate a point H we would like to locate a point H on CF such that HA will be congruent to AD and that is not difficult to do we we'll measure the segment AD and we'll construct the point H. And let me call this point H. I'm going to connect H to D. And the next thing is we would like to focus on two triangles here. The triangles on the top, CFD, CFD on the top, and the triangle right here, AHD. AHD with a pull out so we can see things a little bit better. Well, 
that is 80 degrees that is 80 degrees and then we'll make this angle 20 degrees so I'm going to put 20 degrees over here we know that is 60 degrees and that is 60 degrees alternate interior angles are congruent that means the segment FD is parallel to the segment AE if these two segments are parallel the corresponding angles must be congruent so I would say this angle here is 80 degrees 80 degrees 80 degrees the same thing on the other side 80 degrees and 80 degrees so this is an isosceles triangle well another thing we would like to look at is the triangle ADC from A to D to C this triangle here it is 20 this is 20 degrees and there is 20 degrees so that is an isosceles triangle and AD will be congruent to DC that means DC equals to B plus D from A to D is B plus D from, B, from D to C will be also D, B plus D so we also have B plus D on the other side now we would like to look at the triangle ADH it is 20 degrees from A to D is B plus D well but the way we construct this triangle is AD is congruent to AH AD is congruent to AH so that is an isosceles triangle that means this angle here has to be 80 degrees 80 and 80 is 160 plus 20 is 180 degrees and if AD is B plus D AH will be B plus D as well so we can see that these two triangles are actually congruent psi angle psi psi angle psi but we call FD small d it is small d and that will make HD small d as well HD is across from the 20 degree angle and FD is across from the 20 degree angle the corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent so we know that from H to D is small d okay um, I'm going to call this point P and then it's the point P and I would like to focus on these two triangles here HPA on the left and the triangle DPA on the right and I would say these two triangles are congruent and notice that it is 10 degrees it is 80 degrees so this is 90 degrees the sum of the two angles the sum of the three angles here is 180 degrees it is also 10 degrees it is 80 degrees and it is 90 degrees so these two triangles are congruent by angle psi angle angle psi angle well if they are congruent HP will be congruent to PD and triangle HQP will be congruent to DQP and the reason is quite simple we have psi angle psi the psi pq is common to both triangles psi angle psi well if these two triangles are congruent we will say hq will be congruent to qd so if i connect h to q we can see that these two segments are congruent and now the next thing that I would like to point out is the following well I would like to point out what is this angle here 
Well, that is 80 degrees, and that is 60 degrees, and this angle has to be 40 degrees. And we also know that that is an 80 degree angle here. That is an 80 degree angle. And that will make this angle 60 degrees. Well, if this is 60 degrees, and these two segments are congruent, that means this is an isosceles triangle, and that will make this 60 degrees as well. 60 on here, and 60 over there. And that will make this an equilateral triangle. But this is small d, and that will make this small d as well. And this is small d. It is an equilateral triangle. And now we are getting very close to solving the problem. Um, I would like you to focus on this triangle here, FQD, FQD, which I pull over here. Well, we know that FD is small d, and we also know that QD is small d. So this is an equilateral triangle. I mean, this is an isosceles triangle. And well, what is this angle? This angle over here is 80 degrees from F to D to Q. This angle here is 80 degrees, which is corresponding to this angle. It is an 80 degree angle. Well, if this is 80 degrees, and that will make each angle here 50 degrees. It is 50 degrees, 50 degrees. And now look at the big triangle here, QAE, from Q to A to E. It is a, a big triangle. And it is 70 degrees. I copy over here. And then it's 80 degrees. And that will make this angle here. Again, using the triangle sum theorem, this angle here has to be 30 degrees. But we know that this angle here is 50 degrees. So beta plus 30 degrees will give us 50 degrees. That means beta equals to 20 degrees. And that conclude um, the solution for problem number two. Well, so far we have solved triangle problem number one, and also triangle problem number two. In the next video, we will solve triangle problem number three. With these two angles being 50 degrees and 70 degrees. Thank you for watching.